Welcome to Gold Derby's costume design panel. I'm David Buchanan, um, and I'm here with Susan Michalik from Abbott Elementary. Susan, I wanted to start by asking you, you've worked on so many comedy series and sitcoms in your career. What do you love most about the genre, and what is most unique about Abbott versus anything else you've worked on? Well, I love it because it's happy. They're happy and fun and colorful and have joy in them, and also sentimentality and sweetness. And Abbott, um, in particular, we try to do it from um, price points that teachers could afford. We're trying to shop the show at, you know, and sometimes I fail at that, but at lower price points and trying to do it with um, fun, you know, color and sort of what they really wear, but amplify it. And uh, that is is exciting after years of just buying designer stuff and, you know, sort of doing a different vibe for a really long period of time, trying to change the um trajectory. And also the show is just uh, Quinta Brunson who created it is so wonderful and there's so much love involved in the process of it that it's really fun to do. Yeah, I imagine. And let's talk about Quinta and Janine in particular, because in season yeah. three, you know, we've seen her kind of fashion and style evolution over the three seasons. And then as she moves to the district, that's a big change for the series this season. Yeah. You know, her, her fashion has changed so dramatically. Um, I wanted to ask you about, you know, what was the inspiration for those looks? How did you craft those looks with Quinta? And over the course of, you know, these these past few seasons, just to watch that evolution unfold. Well, at first, I mean, nothing fit. So we deliberately, you know, wore these long dresses and turtlenecks and baggy stuff that was just sort of cinched in with a belt. And um, uh, Quinta has a very uh, significant and strong voice in what she wears, justifiably so. She puts together a lot of the outfits herself. I shop them and we, you know. And then for the the glow up in season three, everything now fits, which is fantastic. And so it's shorter, tighter, uh, more professional. She's growing up, the character's growing up, kind of has the same undertone to it. I originally uh, started with sort of uh, looking at Instagram feeds of teacher style and trying to pick up on that, but do happier one, you know, happy. Yeah, we've also got new characters at the district yeah. season, which is so exciting when, you know, you have an established series and get to introduce a bunch yeah. of fun new folks. What was the inspiration for how they would dress and how did you want to make that universe distinct from, you know, the the teachers at Abbott who we spend so much time with? Well, all the district employees were all meant to look young and kind of um, inspiring and relevant and youthful within Philly and also sort of realistic within the price points they wore. And um, it was a lot of fun to do them just to sort of uh, counter the teachers to have something new. Yeah, what's great about Abbott too is, you know, we spend a lot of time in the in the school, of course, but we also get to see a lot of these teachers outside of the classroom setting and that's where we really get to see their fashion in a different sense and how they express themselves differently. Um, you know, we have a great, um, great segments outside of the classroom all the time in the season. So what, where do you get your inspiration for how they should look when they're not dressing for work? Um, you know, between Jacob is moving in with uh, Mrs. Shimenti, their roommates yeah. now, we get to see them at home. It's so much fun. Like what, how do you kind of go about figuring out what they should wear when they're not teaching and, and looking, you know, professional? Well, I I really need to go into the stores and see what's there and scan uh, websites. And I really search for the thing that I think pops. And so I just go through a lot and bring a lot in and look at it. And I also talk to the actors about when they have a shift, when the costume is something different outside of school. I talk to them about what they might want. And that in, uh, gives me input also. Yeah, we had a wonderful episode recently, Mother's Day. And I wanted to ask you a couple of um, questions on that because... We got to see, you know, Barbara and Gregory spend time together um, and looking beautiful for Mother's Day, which is a very emotional day for the both of them. Yeah. Um, talk us through, you know, the the idea for that for that design, especially because, you know, as I said, the characters are very emotional and they're trying to maybe mask Barbara in particular, maybe mask some of her emotions with this beautiful dress. But, you know, what what went into that whole, you know, kind of set piece for that episode? Well, um, Cheryl, Barbara always wears a floral and we talked about her wearing a dress and we tried some and they just didn't look right because the characters, I mean, Cheryl in her real life wears beautiful dresses all the time, but they didn't look right for Barbara because she's worn pants the whole thing. So we, I just uh, was searching for some pants that look different and found that, found some, a few things, but that floral vest is something she really liked. And it did give, that's thank you for noticing that, some 
a little soft joy to a little sentimental moment. Yeah, and on the same episode, we have a drag brunch, which is so yeah. much fun to see. Yeah, that's a lot of see fun. Those characters do that. And I just love your work in that episode. So take us, talk us through the process of putting that scene together in particular, because that's a total departure from, yeah. I imagine, what you're doing, you know, day to day on, on Abbott. Well, that was, um, we got, originally, we found out it was going to be Shea Coulee and uh, Simone late-ish. We knew it was going to be a drag bunch, but we didn't know it was going to be these incredibly fantastic drag queens. So um, I just went searching for, we talked to them, Shea Coulee, who has a, had a lot of input in what she was wearing and uh, mostly, and then um, I went shopping and searching for anything I could and also trying to combine it in a, in a context to look beautiful fast because everything in comedy is fast. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about Ava as well, um, because I feel like she's had a bit of an evolution this season too, um, especially in the premiere when she's taking her job very, very seriously. We have that great, yeah. in, in, you know, embroidered, be bez bedazzled sweatshirt. Um, but how, you know, compared to all the other characters, what are you doing with her style that's so unique? Because she really, of course, has to stand out from the other teachers at Abbott. You know, Again, I try my, I start at trying to shop lower price points. So, so I go with what looks good in her body, on her body. And also, which she looks fantastic, right? She wears clothes very well. She looks fantastic. So, and, um, and whatever I can find at the moment. And at the beginning, we, we were more conservative, but she lost that pretty quickly and went back to old Ava. You know, it didn't, it didn't hang on too long. Yeah. Yeah. Um something else remarkable about this season is you've had some extraordinary guest stars. Yeah. Um, Bradley Cooper, Questlove, yeah. Kevin Hart. Um, I could name more and more, but I wanted to ask you, you know, when they're making cameos, either digitally like Kevin Hart or they're coming on set, yeah. how much of that that is their design choice because they're supposed to be as themselves in character? How much are you working with them on what that look should be? I mean, Bradley in particular, you know, has a has a great look in that episode. He brought that in himself. So he, the, and then, you know, I got him a rack of everything beautiful I could possibly find. And then he, or my shopper did. And, um, and he came wearing that and he wanted to wear it. So I just had to clear it really quickly. So he wanted to look like, I mean, he's from Philly. He wanted to look, he said, I would wear this if I was, you know, in Philly on the street. So I can't take credit for that. <laughs> and before I let you go, I want to ask you too, what, what is it like working with all of these extraordinary child actors? I mean, you know, to, uh, to, to dress them, it's just, you know, it's, it's so much fun to watch them and get to know them in bits and pieces individually. What is it like to work with them? It's, it's so fun. I mean, thank you for bringing that up because I always, there's such a huge part of the show and their adorableness is so, uh, so vital to this show, breathes life into it. And the, there are days when they're not there and it doesn't, we're on set and it doesn't have the same energy. And when they're there, it's a little crazier, but it's just really sweet. So it's, it's sweet. It's lovely. They're all so happy to be doing it. It's just an interesting experience for them. It's fun. And the clothes, are, you know, the uniforms aren't so special, but they're meant to be worn down. Yeah. And one other quick final question out of everything you've done that we've seen, there are a few more episodes left to see. Do you have a favorite look or two that you want to mention that you're particularly proud of that you thought came out, you know, particularly spectacular? I am. Um, such a, I really like the drag brunch, the whole thing, the whole Mother's Day. I feel like that whole episode turned out really well, fortunately, and that, you know, the drag queens are so beautiful themselves. And then I like the last episode, but there's a party, but we haven't seen that yet. <laughs> uh, Susan, thank you so much for your time today. Thank Thanks for you. It was fun. Thank you.